Heart heavy in hand. Badass music for badass listeners. With Pariah Burke. Cassidy Paris is a teenager with a voice and a mind more mature than her years. From Melbourne, Australia, Cassidy has reached across the globe with a rock and roll singing voice evocative of Joan Jett, Lee Aaron, and Pat Benatar. She's also a spokesperson for Metal Heads Against Bullying and a woman with a heart almost as big as her amazing voice. Cassidy has been mentored by her father, Wicked Smile guitarist Stevie Janewski, and Danger Danger and the Defiance vocalist Paul Lane. But as excellent as those musicians are, and I'm a fan of all three of those bands, Cassidy's talent is at the next level. I can see her music leading the next generation of hard rock and bridging the gap between that genre and pop music in a way not seen since Lee Aaron. And that much talent packed into the level-headed 18-year-old who has been recording since she was 13 gives me hope that the next generation of rock and roll is in good hands. Recently, I had the pleasure and honor of talking with this talented, smart, passionate woman from her home in Australia, from a bedroom that mirrors any rock fans in the 80s, with wall-to-wall concert and band posters, guitars, and PV amps. Cassidy Paris, thank you for, for joining me on the Hard, Heavy, and Hair show. No problem. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Right on. Uh, so let's start with a question to make you think. Out of uh-huh. every performer that's ever stepped onto a stage, living or dead, who would you most like to share the stage with for one house-packed, oh, maybe televised performance? Just one performance. Making me think on my toes this early in the morning. <laughs> uh, this is difficult because I have so many people. I actually got this question a while ago on my Instagram story. And it was like, ah, what do I do here? <laughs> um, that's, that's huge. I love a bunch of artists. I think last time I said Dio just because I love, love, love everything. Dio and I'm I'm obsessed with him as a performer he was a god and I'm, I'm gonna go with that again just because that is such a cool I just I can't even fathom jumping on a stage with him if that was possible that's just unreal <laughs> it's a good choice <laughs> right on and there's, there's there's so many artists like I love people like Pat Benatar, Joan Jett I've always been a massive fan of classic rock and you know the female rockers that were the ones that started this so there's a bunch of people that's so difficult (laughs) yeah um and i hear a lot of i I know some of your influences are are the women you just mentioned i hear a lot of them in your music have you ever heard of shez kane i have not she's a a young it rings a bell actually but i i haven't looked into it She's a, um, a younger uh, female vocalist out of Britain. Um, mm-hmm. She just came out with her debut album. She was in a, a band with her sisters called Kane, but she just came out with her debut album this spring on Frontiers. And you and she remind me, your music reminds me of each other because That's you're so both, cool. you've got this modern rock sound, but you're also channeling the 80s uh, powerful, strong women singers like Pat Benatar and and Lee Aaron and uh, you know maybe a little bit of Lita Ford. Mm-hmm, so, definitely, uh, and look, that's definitely what I envision for my music. Um, it's a it's a modern take on like classic eighties rock, and I'm really looking forward to being well, hopefully being a part of um, bringing that back because I think it's been missing on the forefront for a, for a very, very long time. And it's awesome that you're comparing artists and there's a bunch of artists that are really working super hard to make that happen. And I have, I correction, I had heard of Kane, um, when they're on okay. frontiers. I have. Okay. Well, yeah. Shez Kane is one of the three sisters in the band Kane and she just, she did a solo album, 
uh, that Mo Danny Rexon from um, Crazy Licks mostly wrote. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so it, it's worth listening to. You, yeah, like I said, your music, your music. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know in every interview you're asked about your age every time and all all the time. I hope you don't mind, but I'm also going to ask. But the reason that yeah, at least I'm going to ask about your age is because it's important to people that what you're doing, the things you're doing at your age, at your level, so few people ever get to do. You're clearly talented for any age. Thank you. The fact that you're able to do what you do, that you've released an EP, that you have music videos, you're booking shows, they're significant achievements on their own, but doubly so given your age. So I hope you don't mind. I'm going to ask. No, that's absolutely fine. Thank you. So how, may I ask how old you are, Cassidy? I'm currently 18. I just turned, just turned 18. Uh, I turned 18 maybe nine months ago, uh, okay. last year in November. So that was super, super cool. That happened in lockdown. So that was a, it's a little bit of a change when you turn 18 here because you can actually get your driver's license. Um, which is good news for my my dad and my mum because I remember the first time I hopped in a car with my dad, he was like, never again. We're not doing this again, okay, for a very long time until you get your licence and you're a qualified driver. <laughs> but, yeah, so that was really cool, getting my licence and stuff when I turned 18. And you know what? I just think it's a really cool age. So I'm really uh, digging being 18. <laughs> Right on. It's a really good age, at least yeah. here in the States. What else can you do in Australia at 18? You can actually, not that I do a lot of this, um, you can actually drink when you're 18 in Australia. But, yeah, it's definitely, it's kind of like when you become independent a little bit more when you're 18 in Australia. I think it's a similar similar thing in um, the US, is it? When you're it 18? is. So it, it, in the U.S., 18 is a legal adult. You can vote. You can go you know, you know, get your own bank account. You can sign contracts, all that stuff. But you can't drink until you're 21. Um, so they, they do restrict some things. But most of 18 is that's the age of independence. Yes. So how old were you when you started professionally recording? So I was 13 years old when I recorded oh, wow. Talk About It, which was my first single. And I always knew that I wanted to start young because I always knew that it was my passion and I had a drive to get right into it. But yeah, it was, it was super interesting the way um, when I went to high school, because in um, Australia, you begin high school when you're about 13 years old um and it was very interesting the response I had in high school when I started um like embarking on this journey so yeah it's been it's been an awesome interesting ride so far and I'm really really looking forward to the future and what it holds that's very cool uh, did the other kids treat you differently in high school uh yeah you could say that it was very it was a mixed bag, actually, because high school was a bunch of people saying we're going to support, like a, a couple of people supporting. Like I had a, a good handful of friends that I'm really, really lucky that I bonded with quickly and early. Like one of my best friends I still um, talk to and he still supports me today. Like he's an awesome person. And then I had a overwhelming amount of teasing and bullying which was hard to deal with from a young age um, just because I was doing something that was different to everyone else and obviously when you're putting yourself out there you're going to get a bunch of people that just don't respond well and don't understand it which is absolutely fine but I am very lucky that I used my experiences and put them out on a platform with um, Metal Heads Against Bullying, which is an organisation that I am with and um, I'm really, really proud to be with. And I, I kind of channeled my, my feelings around the bullying that I um, really was directed at me in high school and 
put that forward on a platform to try and help other people. Wow, that's fantastic that you you were able to take this this negativity, this ne- negative experience that you had, and turn into something positive. How yeah, is definitely. the how has the response been to Metalheads Against Bullying? It's been I've had an overwhelming amount of support worldwide, and it blows my mind constantly how many people I get writing to me from a bunch of places in the world. Um, that I really hope to tour one day uh, and they all write to me saying, I think what you're doing is so cool and it's just so awesome. Like people I've never met, it blows my mind every single time I read a message like that and um, I'm really glad that I spoke out um, when I got the opportunity to because it was really important for me as a person to do that and putting that out on a platform is always a little bit uh I was a little bit apprehensive to do it at first just because sure. it's putting your life out there and that's a person, like that's very personal experience as well, but it's helped a lot of people and I get people writing to me and, um, and we're connecting on like a new level because people have experienced this and the bond we share, it's, it's crazy. I'm really, really, really just a lucky person to be able to have that awesome support network over the world. Well, and I would wager that they are lucky to have someone like you inspiring them. Thank you. I really appreciate that. One of the questions I had planned to ask you uh, was, you know, given the early age at which you started and how long you've been doing this, would you have any advice for other talented teens? But I want to amend that and say, given what you just told me about Metalheads Against Bullying and what you experienced, Do you have any advice for teenagers in general, whether they're creative or not, just teenagers in general who are dealing with the same things you went through? Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think there's a bunch of advice I could give in terms of just following your passions. And I know that sounds like a broken record for me probably by this point, but following your passions and really going through with what you love is so so important being true to yourself um I'm so glad I was true to myself at such a young age because the support has just been awesome from people and the response but I was always that outcast in high school and basically everywhere I go and I love I take pride in it and for a long time I know a lot of people well I've had conversations with people and they're like I'm not sure and I'm like just be yourself be true to yourself be the outcast because I think that's cool I think that is so super cool that's very good advice thank you (laughs) no problems so on the topic of advice what's the best piece of advice another musician other than your father who uh, has been in a lot of bands and uh, he's in your band, as I understand, correct? Mm-hmm. So what's the best piece of advice you got from another musician other than your dad? Yeah, I've had a huge amount and I'm very, very grateful to be surrounded by a bunch of really, really talented, successful musicians. I've had a bunch of advice um, from my producer, Paul Lane, Danger, Danger, Defiance, uh, Dark Horse. He's had so much success and he's so super awesome. I always call him the musical Mozart, um, the rock Mozart. (laughs) And he is just unreal. And having a conversation with that man is just like, I feel like a sponge. Like I just want to absorb everything because he has so much great information and guidance and support to offer he wants he tells me a bunch of stories from when he was my age and going into the musical industry and that's super cool to hear but he's constantly reminding me to stay it's so important to stay like level-headed and to enjoy the ride I know he's written a song about enjoying the ride I think it's on the uh I think it goes fast And that is such, such a powerful song. And I've always related to that so much. And he's always constantly reminded me that it it just does. You have so much, so many people and so many cool experiences around you. So you've just got to take it all in because it does truly go fast. Yeah. 
Yeah, especially in the music industry. Yeah, absolutely. But I, so like I, I said, I've I've had so much awesome advice, even from Danny Ciccardi from Wicked Smile, um, the band that my dad is currently in. He gives me so much awesome, like, vocal advice and just so much guidance and support. I, I can't even begin to express, like, my gratitude for it. Oh, that's really cool. Um, so how did your relationship with Paul Lane start? It's an interesting one. My dad was actually supporting his band. So the Radio Sun was supporting um, Paul Lane's solo act in Australia. And they were his backing band. He actually stayed with us and continues to stay with us when he comes down to Melbourne, which is really cool. And I expressed an interest for music quite early. So I was probably about 11 or 12, maybe yeah, I think I was 11 or 12 when he first came down here and he's oh, such a cool guy. He brought a bunch of like American chocolate and sweets and candy and my brother and I were just like, oh, my God, this guy is so cool. Not only because he just brings chocolate, but he's just got so many cool stories. And like I said, I just want to hear every single one of them. <laughs> every single time he comes over here, he just talks about these things I'm like oh my god that actually happened he's like yeah <laughs> and I don't mean to uh mimic your accent that's not what I'm trying to do at all but no, no, no. Um, um well the I, Canadian I accent's too. slightly different I think right uh, yes it is yes. um yeah. and uh, so I'm I'm only second generation American my my right. grandmother came from from Canada and then her parents came from Scotland so oh. but I pick up accents pretty quickly. So if I sound start sounding like you, I apologize. No, that's just, all good. Um, I grew up in Boston and I oh, had wow. to get rid of my Boston accent because I was I, I had moved to Florida and uh, they there were some areas that were still fighting the Civil War and they did not like the Yankee accent. Um, so now I have a neutral American accent, but yeah, no, no, I, I still pick up accents like crazy. So if you start picking up mine, I won't take offense. I do the same thing. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, that's super cool that you pick up accents. I wish I could do that. I feel like sometimes I just, I can't replicate accents well and then I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> like I can't do a British accent at all all it's hilarious uh and i've got a lot of brit friends which is upsetting that i can't replicate their accent but that's okay i'll learn one day in regards to the paul um friendship or alliance uh yeah so when i was about 12 or 13 we sat down and i had already before uh he came out he had told my dad i love his music so we had been listening to at that time I think he had released the Dark Horse album which was um the album that he'd been working on for a couple of years I think and it was super cool I loved a bunch of songs I actually play one in my set um so that's so I like that so much that it's in my set now but um yeah so we've actually started we wrote a song together when he came over here for the first time and it happened to be Talk About It, which was my first release. We mucked around with some chords and some ideas that I liked and drew from some inspiration, 80s and both modern stuff that I really digged. And Talk About It was the final product, which I'm, I, I really, really love that song. It's just, it's a representation of like, growth as well for me as an artist because I think vocally and in terms of performance when I performed it before it really shows me growing as an artist and progressively getting better I hope so yeah and uh he co-wrote stand with you didn't he as yes. well yes so Paul and I continue to co-write together just because I think we understand each other and our um like our minds think very uh together when we're writing and mm -hmm. I just I love um everything that we've done together I'm really really proud of it so my new single that's coming out next week wannabe is also a co-write with Pauline and I am so so excited to release that one it's probably my favorite yet oh good I'm looking forward to hearing that 
Yeah. Thank you. So what's your write, your songwriting process like? It does vary every single time I um, write. And with Paul, it, it definitely does vary because we're on opposite sides of the uh, earth. <laughs> um, and because he's in Canada, uh, we actually use Skype most of the time um, when we write. I mean, when he comes over here, we try to write as much as possible and get as much done as possible, but there's only so much you can do in so little time when you're performing together and everything. So, yeah, I um, I normally write, like I we come up with the idea, the base, um, so just like the chords and everything, we come up that with that over like a Zoom meeting, like what we're on right now mm -hmm. or a Skype, and um, we kind of discuss what the track we want the track to be like. Like we um, pull out bits and pieces of like inspiration and then we get to making the track and get to writing the lyrics and throw lyrics back and forth. And it's just a really cool process. And I think hopefully that uh, it works well. <laughs> I think so. I like your music. I, I like you. how it's written. Um, Thank you. So you mentioned uh, that you do one of Paul's songs. You cover one of Paul's songs in your live set. Do you do other covers in your sets? I do. At the moment, I'm actually, so I'm playing a show next week, so I'm super psyched. And it's the first time I've played a show in a, a very long time because of COVID, obviously. And yeah. I am playing a Joan Jett song, uh, I Hate Myself for Loving You. And nice. I'm really, really excited about that one because it's just one I was mucking around with in the living room. My dad came downstairs, like tiptoed down the stairs and he's like, that sounds pretty good. I think we should put that in your set. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically how that one came about. I've always loved Joan and um, all the music she's done and everything she's been involved with. She's such, like, a god. She's a female goddess, and it's awesome to be able to cover something like that because, it's again, it's a modern take on an old classic. Yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, any thoughts of releasing it, recording it and releasing it? I have. I have thought about it. Uh, I'm actually going to record another cover, but that's a secret at the moment. Um, okay. And in the future, well, quite soon, and I'm looking forward to releasing that one. That's, a, again, another spin on something that uh, was really popular in the 70s, 80s. Okay. So that's really cool. <laughs> well, you, you piqued my interest. I can't wait to hear what it is. Thank you. Yeah, it's 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 an exciting one, I think. Are there are there any songs that you would really like to cover, but they scare you? Actually, one that did scare me was Dio Rainbow in the Dark. That always scared me. Um, well, not scared as much. I would probably call it like it's just doing it justice. It's, it's such a big thing, even with the Joan Jet one. Like, and when when you're covering something, it's just so much pressure to. And well, it's not really pressure because I guess you are spinning it, and it's your spin on it, and it's a modern day like a remake. But I remember. That was one of the tracks. Like I like to, when I'm rehearsing, um, pull a bunch of different artists. Like I'll listen to Keith Urban, Carrie Underwood, like a country rock stuff as well. Um, like my dad says, a good song is a good song. And I like yep. to rehearse to a bunch of artists just to make sure that I am uh, growing and making sure that I'm like taking inspiration from a whole bunch of different genres but in terms of the do one i was mucking around with that one in my living room when i was rehearsing and i the first time i sang it i i, I was like oh my god like these notes are unreal and i just progressively been taking it slow and trying to work up um my vocal ability through that song so that's definitely one that i have been doing and rehearsing recently and it's it's a huge song like anything Dio does is huge um yeah. or did um so yeah definitely that one 
Okay, that would be really interesting. I was just talking to Vinny Apice the other day, the drummer and co-writer of pretty much everything Dio. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we were talking about the way the songs are mixed and, and uh, how you could really hear every instrument in the Dio music. And you Absolutely. could really hear the nuanced phrasing of Ronnie James, the way he sang, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really curious to hear how you sound on that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely different. And my dad actually stole that one from, well, not stole it, but uh, I was rehearsing it and then he was like, I'm going to take that one for my set. Uh, <laughs> so Danny Ciccardi does that one justice and he's awesome, unreal when he sings it live. It's crazy. So that's super cool that Wicked Smile have been able to take that one and twist it in their own way. I'm, I'm a fan of Wicked Smile as well. I like their music. Yeah, they're super Uh, cool. And I always say to dad that it's definitely my, I always see my dad progressively growing as well as an artist. And I know um, he's older and I just think you, you're constantly, constantly learning. And my dad is a true reminder of that as a songwriter, even I just see him getting better and better as the years progress and wicked smiles are real, real, like it shows the true colors on how he has grown as an artist and as a songwriter obviously Paul co-writes that stuff as well but um yeah Wicked Smile is definitely my favorite stuff my dad has ever done and I totally am such a fangirl for every single song on their latest album well their newest and debut album um yeah and uh, are you down on the front row cheering them on during the live shows absolutely I, 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 I know you you just joined them on stage recently didn't you I did on Saturday night um for their gig and that was super cool I did a song called Stronger which is a song that my dad and um Paul wrote together and it was a very um it's very close to me because my dad wrote that uh regarding uh, my bullying, uh, situation in high school. And he just wanted to bring to light how important it is to be true to yourself and to be stronger, really. On that note, a lot of your music is, a lot of your lyrics seem very deeply personal. Have you heard from fans that your music reaches them, that it helped them through a moment? Oh, yeah. Um, I get, like I said, I get a huge amount of people writing to me and being like, this helped me through this. And I'm so glad that you released this song because especially like I get a lot of comments about Stand because Stand was a song that I wrote about that experience. And it was very, very, um, when I wrote it, it was very, very raw for me because it was after Talk About It had been released. So it was the first time that I saw people kind of changing their attitudes towards me at high school or even in my life there there are a lot of people um just around me you really do see who your true friends are and even uh the support from your family it does definitely shift when you do something so out there and so different like what I chose to pursue and I think stand was a real uh, it was a song that I definitely related to at that time and a lot of people related to as well. And I wasn't expecting so many people to write to me being like, hey, this song helped me in this way. And I'm so glad you wrote it because, and I'm so glad I wrote it because it helped someone. And that's exactly what I try to do with my music. I want people to relate. I want people to, to help people. And I want to show them how much, show them my experiences, but also for them to connect on a personal level as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the power of music. Yeah. And I think music, you know, one song or another has helped all of us through something, you know, absolutely. Um, do you don't re- none of those stories stick. None of your fan stories have stick out in particular in your mind, do they? You don't remember one in particular? Nothing in particular. I I know that I've had 
gotten a lot of like overarchingly I had received a lot of messages regarding people being bullied whether that was online um I got a, a lot of people which is so sad and I think like using social media to positively impact the world is so important because there are so many keyboard warriors and it's so sad that people put their time and energy and efforts into something that is so negative I just I could never understand or fathom that and a lot of people would write to me being like these people would come at me online for literally nothing for pursuing what I love and I just I never could understand that as a human never <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I, yeah. I, I can intellectualize some of it. I can understand, you know, people are angry. They lash out in the wrong direction. Yeah. But I just, it really does not, deep in here, I, I can't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it um, definitely baffles me. So I really applaud you for doing something about it, for writing music that reach, that that decries bullying, that reaches people and for participating and being a, an ambassador for, um, was it Metal Heads Against Bullying, right? Yeah, Metal Heads Against Bullying. Yeah. yeah. So I really Thank applaud you. you for that. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So I have uh, one more question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I also want to make sure that we get your socials so that everybody knows where to find you, where yeah. to find your music, and where to find MHAB. But I want to ask you this question. If you could be part of a three a three act concert, what other performers would you want on the bill with you? Oh my god, these questions are so cool but so hard. <laughs> oh, I've always wanted to gig with Hailstorm. I just Lizzie Hale has just been one of my huge inspirations from such a young age. I remember. I recall bringing in a like huge like human size hailstorm guitar poster in year seven to my class because you had to uh make a poster of a band that inspired you and people were doing um everything from like Foo Fighters and there was a bunch of things that um people were doing like even within the the pop scene as well and I brought in Hailstorm and everyone was like this girl I have no idea what's wrong with her and I was like are you serious have you heard these people and I played apocalyptic to my entire year seven class which was I think they were all like stunned after they watched that <laughs> but yeah Hailstorm is always someone I'd love to have gigged with oh Def Leppard I am obsessed with Def Leppard the biggest fangirl that ever existed <laughs> huge fan the Hysteria album is just my all-time like that's the holy grail it's unreal yeah that that is one of the best records of all time definitely yeah. Def Leppard's best record but one of the best rock records ever in my opinion so absolutely I'm i completely agree right on okay so where can people find you online what's your what's your socials and where can people find metal heads against bullies yeah so cassidy paris official on instagram twitter facebook all of the socials you can think of and cassidy paris on youtube you can find me and also for merch and tickets and my new single and my upcoming EP. That is at CassieParis.com. And Metalheads Against Bullying is just Metalheads Against Bullying on all social media platforms. Excellent. Okay. Well, Cassidy Paris, thank you very much for coming on the Hard Heavy and Hair Show. Really Thank appreciate you so it. much for having me. I It's been such a cool time. Well, I am going to cross my fingers that someday you appear on, on the bill with Def Leppard and Hailstorm. <laughs> Thank so we'll you. I'm put crossing that my the fingers universe. too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your time. Remember, to hear the music discussed in this interview, 
Stream the on-demand Hard Heavy and Hair show at pariahrocks.com. That's P-A-R-I-H-R-O-C-K-S dot com. Also hit pariahrocks.com to stream or listen on a radio station near you. The regular two-hour Hard Heavy and Hair show with me, Pariah Burke. Hard Heavy and Hair is your weekly dose of hard rock, heavy metal, and hair bands from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 20 teens, and today, including the latest new releases, your old favorites, and deep cuts and rare hair, along with rock news and trivia. 